Hi, everybody. Hey, planet Earth, we meet again. Welcome to Anthony Draws Cartoons, the channel where no idea is too crazy. As the title of this video indicates, I am going to be showing you how to make stuff glow in Clip Studio Paint. It's maximum reward for really minimal effort. You know, that sidebar full of all those tools and settings and sub settings, it can be pretty intimidating for a newcomer to the program. So don't worry, I'm gonna be taking good care of you today. I'm gonna to show you step-by-step step what these tools are, how to use them and how to set your settings. Before we get going though, be sure to hit the like button and make sure to hit subscribe to keep the party going and get more content just like this. All right, so let's get started here. First thing you're gonna do, you're gonna go over to your airbrushes. I have a couple that I've already customized myself for my own personal use. Uh, so let's just use normal for right now. Normal. You're gonna go down to blending mode. You're gonna take where it says normal and you're gonna put, you already run, glow. bada bing, you already won half the battle. The thing about the glow tool is that it only works if you're applying it to something that's dark. All right, let's see, we got blue selected. If you put the blue glow on a blank canvas, nothing's gonna come out because you can't make something that's white glow. So let's take just a plain black canvas. Let's fill in paint, there we go. And now we can do all sorts of neon crap. This is sort of like how, you know, the Aladdin from the genie, like just this kind of stuff. All right, um, let's get serious. So if you go back to your tool settings over here on the left-hand side, where it says brush density, that determines how thick your airbrush is gonna come out. So if you put it all the way at the 100, it's like this. If you put it, let's drop it down to like 50, it's like that. But here's the thing with the glow feature. Even if your brush density is not set very high, you can still go over it multiple times and you can get that glow going. Ah, oh, look how bright that is. Ah, oh, my eyes. My eyes. And something that I like to do is I like to go over again to make certain areas really highlighted and pop. So like the thicker areas or wherever there's like, you know, the edge that's closest to the camera. I don't know, you can create some depth that way. Again, the more that you go over it, the more it'll glow. And then say for the very end, if you really want to intensify the light on some things, go all the way to the white. Cause that is like, that's like pure light coming in. And then you could do other colors and do like that. You could do like little stuff like that. Um, one thing it is very important to note that the only way that this can happen is if you do it in the same layer. So the reason why I'm able to do the neon glow here is because it is in the same layer as this black background. If I had the black background on a, a layer underneath it, this would not be happening. It would be just like the beginning where nothing was glowing and nothing was showing up because there was nothing that the glow was being applied to. So you always need something to apply the glow to. So let's play around here for a little bit. Let's do something a little abstract. Let's just make trippy stuff. And what I'm doing right now, I'm just taking single solid colors and I'm just making a bunch of glowing balls. <laughs> And again, the more you go over the area, the more it's gonna glow and intensify. So let's apply different colors on top to see how they interact. We'll put some blue into this red and we'll make like a nice little purpley. We'll make on top of this yellow, let's do some, let's add red to make it like an orangey burst kind of thing. And then on this purple, let's add some pink in the middle. Pink, I said, damn it. All right, so now I'm gonna use my two brushes that I personally use for all glowing effects. I have medium glow and hard glow. Those are two brushes that I set up myself. And the only difference is that hard glow is the shape of the brush. I use this mainly for like highlights and really um, tiny details. Something like this is gonna work a little bit different in that it glows just like the others, but it's a lot sharper. So let's continue making some trippy stuff. You can create your own custom brushes and brush shapes in the tool settings, but that will be for another video. Today, we're just focusing on the glow effect. starting to look like something from a Doctor Strange comic. Mm. 
All right, so you get the idea. All right, so let's try something that you might actually see in real life. Uh, let's do something like fire. Okay, so let's draw glowing fire. Um, now, generally, when you're doing glowing, it's, it's best usually to do from dark to light. So I'll start with like a red. Let's put some like reddish orange on the bottom. Okay, now let's move things over a little bit more towards the macaroni and cheese color. Ooh, that's looking scary. And then we can use a glow effect on a sharper shape brush to do like... Ah! No, not that sharp. Ooh, you know what? Let's make this a really hot fire. Let's add some blue on the bottom. Alright, let's throw some gasoline on this baby. Ooh, that's really hot. Ah, I'm blind! <laughs> All right, let's do something else. Um, oh, electricity. Electricity is a good one. That sh glows. What about like that plasma ball that that you had when you were a kid? It was like that thing that just like had the forked lightning that goes all over the place. It usually has like a big ball in the middle. All right, so let's put like that. Now you can do it one of two ways. You can either go from dark to light, which I personally like to do because it's easier to go from dark to light than it is to go from light to dark because once you lay your brightest color down, that's it. And if you go too bright too soon, you'll just end up with a big bright white light. But maybe, I don't know, it's, you know what, let me try it both ways. Maybe it's not that big a deal. Let's see. Okay. Um, so let's go from dark to light, the way I usually do it, on the bottom. Let's do some lightning bolts going down here. Alright, so we start with the purple, now let's highlight it with the white. Looks like Ghostbusters. Get my sharp neon brush out again. Do a little bit of this. And you could do stuff like wrapping it around. Okay, now let's take the opposite approach for the top. I'm curious to see how much of a difference there really is. So let's start with the white and then build the color around it. So we got some white lightning going like popping. Now let's go in and we'll make a wider brush so it can cover the whole area. And let's do one of these. And I guess there really isn't much of a difference. It really is just your personal preference and how you like to build from the bottom up with your colors. But yeah, the epicenter needs to be brighter. I'm blind. But let's give it like a glowing dark blue in the middle coming out. Oh yeah. It's like something from Poltergeist. So now let's try something else. Um, let's do something like green smoke, like that green fog that you that you see in like zombie movies. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of down here. Let's just draw some like bubbles and plumes of smoke. Some little ones, some bigger ones. We got something that's looking like uh, green fog, green, I don't know, witch's soup. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this could be, but let's add more glow to the edge to make it really pop forward and give it a highlight on that side. Highlights, highlight. Again, if you go over the surface of something that has already added glow, then it will glow brighter, as you can see here. Put some, ooh, 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 that looks creepy. Yeah, that looks like we're in like a witch's stew. Okay, so now everything that I've shown you so far just now, this is all, these are all examples of how to make something that's a glowing object. Now I'm gonna show you how to take a person or an object and shine glowing colored light onto it from an external light source. So let's take a look. Okay, let's open up. Here I've got a little t-shirt design that I was doing for a client last week. Um, it's a pretty basic kind of cutesy kind of drawing. So let's see if we can maybe up the drama a little bit and add some glowy kind of spookiness to it. Now, the quick and easy way to make something glow is just the same as what we did before. You take your brush, make sure it's on the setting for add glow. And let's say we want to make them glow green. Bada bing, he's glowing green. All right, now let's say you want to get a little bit more fancy schmancy. Go over here and you take a look over this guy, this guy over here. This is your auto select tool. And there's two ways to auto select. Follow adjacent pixel, don't follow adjacent pixel. On, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Follow adjacent pixel means literally that. It selects a color up until the point where the color changes. So if I hit like here, it only selects this border of this particular area because once the color changes, it stops. It only highlights that specific area. Now, if I were to uncheck follow adjacent pixel, now when I hit that, it selects 
every area with that color throughout the whole illustration. So now you get everything, even though they're not touching. Okay, so now with that selected, let's go back to our brush that's glowing. Let's pick green and let's do bada bing. That's got significantly more drama than not selecting it because now you've separated your lights from your shadows. And the cool thing is now you can also select your shadow sections and you can still make sort of like the backlight a little bit and if you can go a little bit easier on it so that way you can add the glow but it'll be less intense than it would be if you had not selected anything and you just uniform glowed the whole area so now let's say if you want to take it a step further okay so the shadow the shadow section is selected what if we make it glow a different color and let's do not green but closer to like an like a bluish aqua Let's do that. Let's see. How does that, how does that look? Eh. Okay. Not great. Dark blue. Mm, purple. Eh. Pink. Ugh. I'm kind of, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of digging the red. Let's go with the red for right now. Just for right now. Okay. So if I use that color for the shadow, that means I'm going to use that color for all shadows. Okay, so that would mean that the green goes on his staff. And that means the red goes on that shadow part of his staff. And that means the red goes on the shadow part of the scythe, right? I'm starting to regret my color choices here, but I'm in too deep now, let's keep going. All right, so let's do the wings. This is the light side. So green, green, and the dark side. Leads to suffering. Put a little bit of red in there. And there you have it. All right, let's give him a background just to finish him up. Let's give him a glowing background. What kind of uh, color should we give him? Just the green and the red somehow? Like mix the two, maybe like green on the inside of the circle and maybe red on the edges of the circle. No, that looks like diarrhea. Maybe like a darker purple. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. And if we can combine some stuff from before. Oh, what if we do like um, purple smoke? Purple smoke, all in my tomb. A little red on the bottom and there you have it yeah I think that's looking pretty good but since this is on a t-shirt it's gonna have no background I was just having a little bit of fun with the glow effect that's the effect of the glow effect and that my friends is how you make stuff glow in clip studio paint Thank you very much for stopping by, everybody. If you would like to see more content just like this, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button to make sure that I know you are here. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please leave me a comment in the comment section below and I will be sure to accommodate everybody and uh, let me know if you want to see any more Clip Studio Paint tutorials. Um, I know all the buttons, all the tricks, all the ins and outs. I have stumbled my way through this program for the past five years. So uh, chances are, if you're having a problem with something, I've probably had the same problem as you. Links to my social media pages are in the video Video description below please follow me on instagram facebook all of them um i promise i'm not a robot and i will not spam you for business inquiries about commissions t-shirts anything design related please contact susan at the office her info is right on the screen or right here catch you later planet earth